every day and I came with a next outfit and I was like, ooh, and I have to be like, Jesus. He you created just... sex, mate. He yeah. knows how good it is. Like, he created it for a reason. 100%. <laughs> if you go with the flow and wait until marriage to have sex, you will have sex. Hey guys! Welcome back to our channel. Welcome back! So, we're on this journey of talking about waiting until marriage to have sex. So, we've done the why, that was our previous video, part yeah. one. This and is part two, right? Yeah, and we're talking about how we waited and the barriers we put in place. Yeah. And in our next video, we're actually going to be talking about sex in marriage. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, we waited two years, 11 months to have sex. We've had sex in our previous relationships, but in this relationship, we decided just to honor God and not have sex. Yeah, 100%. And- As in marriage, because we have sex now, you know? <laughs> <sighs> what? Well, she's so distracting. She's so distracting. Sorry. But yeah, we decided not to have sex. And we're not gonna lie to you, like it was an easy walk in the park. It was very oh, difficult. My. Cool. As we start our relationship and we started to talk more, we started to spend more time together, the attraction grew stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. I grew <laughs> I grew in love Anna more and more each day and there was all this hormone just going through my body and I didn't know what to do with it. As a man, yes it was very difficult but I really just wanted to actually exercise a sense of self-control. Mm. I think sometimes in our society that we think about the alpha male or someone who is very aggressive and someone who's always controlling other people and that's just maybe a sign of weakness. Mm. First of all, as a man, you have to be able to control yourself yeah. and you know, I just took it as a personal responsibility that the task to actually achieve purity throughout our relationship, the burden was on me. I wanted to make sure that the first time that we had sex was on our wedding day yeah. and not before. Yeah. So yeah, it was difficult, but it was very possible. Yeah. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk you through some of the barriers that we had in place just to make sure that we didn't have sex until we got married. So the first barrier we put in place is that we communicate early and let each other know what our core values are. Yeah. Because in a relationship, you know, there's things that are negotiable, like, you know, are we gonna shop in Tesco or Sainsbury's when you're older? Are we gonna um, wear Adidas or Nike? Like, who cares? But there's a sense of core values that you wanna hold on to, and those are things that you're not willing to compromise on. So from the beginning of our relationship, we just said, okay, in this relationship, we don't wanna have um, sex. And it was good knowing that our values was on the same wavelength. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't have a, a strong value like, I'm not gonna have sex and someone actually wants to have sex and then you're, you're trying to persuade them into not having sex. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just wouldn't work. And like, my thing was that the next person I date will be my husband and I will wait to have sex with him mm -hmm. until my wedding night. So if I met someone and they're like, you're telling them that you're gonna wait till marriage and they're like, oh, okay, oh, that sounds cool. I'll, I'll, I might do that. Like, no, that's not good enough because I need someone who is as sold out on that yeah, that's me. Like. What you don't want to do, you don't want to hide behind the fact that you want to wait and then six months come down the line and then you realize that your partner doesn't want to wait. Mm. Like, you're, you've just wasted six months yeah. of your time because how, like, you've got to really ask yourself, why is it so important for you and actually believe that and actually walk it through. Yeah. And the person does not necessarily need to understand yeah. why um, you want to wait. All you really have to say is, I want to wait. Yeah. And if they're not about that life, mm. Bye Felicia. Yeah. Literally, in, in recruitment, they always talk about recruiting slowly and fire quickly. Yeah. When you're getting to know someone, go through a, um, a more thorough process and explain everything. If they don't want it, bye. 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 And if your value is like not to have sex and someone is trying to make you have sex, get rid of them quickly. Yeah. Don't even waste time. Yeah. Because you have to ask yourself the question like, do you want someone so bad that you're willing to compromise what you believe in to yeah. be in a relationship? And for us, it was like, no, I'm not compromising that. Like, I, that, I really believe that the person that God has for me will wait until marriage to have sex and will have made that personal decision themselves yeah. before they have come into contact with me. So that's why I think we were able to do it because he had his own conviction, I had my own conviction and we're yeah. both there trying to encourage each other so that we could do it. But when it's just one person, like it's easier for them to pull you down than it is for you to pull them up. Yeah. Like, that's the reality of it. Um, and sometimes we're not secure in ourselves and the decisions that we've made that we're willing to compromise it for the sake of wanting something else but for us it was just like nope we're we're to, we ain't yeah, so it. it's really important to communicate early mm. in order to wait until marriage you have to make sure that your decision is 
an active decision that you have made and not passive. Yeah. Because if you're passive about anything, it will happen. Yeah, because like, I read this quote on Instagram and it's literally something that I live by. Because <laughs> God can speak to you through Instagram, you know? And it said, only dead fish go with the flow. Being passive is going with the flow. And dead fish go with the flow. They're just led by whatever stream they're yeah. on and they just end up somewhere that they didn't even know they were going to end up in. But Mate, if you go with the flow and wait until marriage to have sex, you will have sex. Like, if you're just casually like, oh yeah, I'll come round. Oh yeah, I'll stay over. Oh yeah, we'll sleep in the same bed. We'll do this, we'll do that. You will have sex. Like, you can't trust yourselves. Seriously, because when you're in that moment, it's like some next time my hormone takes over, right? It's like a mixed spirit. Yeah. Like, like, oh my gosh. And like, you can be the best Christian in the world, but you put yourself in that environment, I'm telling you, you will fall. So for us, we're just like, let's be active about it. Let's see things before they even come to occur. And as we've said it countless times over, you can't be led with your feelings mm. because your feelings will deceive you yeah. into doing things that you don't want to do. Yeah. And the worst thing is like knowing that you don't want to do something and then waking up the next day full of regret. So let's not live our life with our feelings dictating our decisions. Yeah, and that's really hard for me because I'm a feelings kind of person. A like, feeler. I'm definitely a feeler. And I think in our dating phase, that really trained me to not be led by my feelings because my feelings would want to snuggle up with him all the time. And it's hard because this is the person that we've loved most out of anyone that we've ever dated before. But our previous exes, we've had sex with them, we've done all this stuff. Like, it's a real mental challenge. We now know that through being obedient, like this a blessing in it so we just um, we just wanted to just stick it out yeah in order to help us along the journey and wait until marriage we thought more about what we can do rather than on the things that we can't do because if you keep thinking about the boundaries of what you can't do you're actually going to get as close to as possible mm. and you will just fall off the edge yeah. or you might just you know do something that's a bit more watered down so you you might not be having sex but you might be masturbating yeah. you might not be having sex but then you might start watching pornography until you get married like these are still things that are not acceptable but we have to realize that there's a lot of things that you actually can do yeah. so we can go to dinner we can go to the cinema you know we can can just go and have gentle strolls and talk. There's a lot, there's a big opportunity to get to know each other mm. and, t and seize that moment rather than focus on the physical act because it's through the intangible things of getting to know each other and understanding each other's heart mm. that's going to sustain your relationship. You mm. can have good sex but that would not sustain a relationship yeah. and we really just believe that there's seasons in relationships and there's this time where you really root your foundation in who you are mm. and get to know each other rather than jumping ahead to the physical act there's a season for you to actually exercise getting to know each other yeah. so that you're more grounded and when you do have sex it's a lot more intimate than just having this physical act. Yeah, and it really, really builds a sense of contentment within you. Like, we need to learn to be content where we're at. When I was single, I would be like, oh, if I was in a relationship, I'd be able to, you know, do this. And then when you're in a relationship, like, oh, when we're married, mm -hmm. you know, some of the arguments that we'd have, we won't be having it because we, we just need to have sex and it's, it's more of a physical frustration. And games always used to tell me, like, don't be that person that's, in a season and not enjoying that season because you're always thinking about the next season thinking that that will be better because that's a lie I believe from the enemy like we need to focus more on the blessings of a particular season rather than the limitations of that that season brings and I think for us like focusing on what we can do in our courtship like really get to know each other and stuff like that and go for strolls like when was the last time we went for a stroll? Like, the walks were amazing it had its blessings so we just think that Focus on what you can do rather than what you can't do in the season that you're in. When waiting until marriage, accountability is so important. Big time. And it's really important to, sh um, to share the fact that you're waiting with your close friends and family. Yeah. People who will support your decision rather than be like, oh, why are you waiting? Yeah. People, yeah, you want to get around people who understand. For example, I lived with my sister at the time when me, Gabe's and I were dating and I just told her, I was like, make sure we don't have alone time together or like if we're in the living room, like, like the door needs to be wide open yeah. just feel like you can walk in don't knock before you walk into any environment like little things like that where that way we're being held accountable yeah. and it really helped us just stay on that narrow path because you, you don't think that you can do this on your own like don't have pride and it's, think yeah, that it's really difficult yeah it's a very well. difficult thing little things like that really do help you stay on that path and i know some people who won't even enter like their partner's house because they just keep the boundaries strict so it's just important just to get with around people um, who can really support and encourage you along yeah. the way find a i don't know like 
there, there might be other couples who are also waiting now. Yeah. Those are people that you want to be speaking to. Yeah. If you're constantly speaking to people who are actively having sex, yeah. you're also going to find yourself having sex as well because yeah. the, the people who you spend time with is the person you're actually going to become. So yeah. if your friends are having active sex in their relationship, you're more likely to. Regardless of how strong you may feel as a Christian or whatever your values may be, like you will not weigh it out if you're, yeah. all your friends are doing this. So surround yourself with people who are like-minded and understand the value of waiting and talk about how exciting it is not to be having sex. Literally, I think having people around you who know the decisions that you've made and will hold you to it and won't be scared to hold you to it, that's so important. Yeah. For us, like, I feel like the whole world knew, like the pressure <laughs> was so real. Like, so real. we're not having sex because Everyone is yeah, everyone's gonna hold everyone, it accountable. Yeah, everyone is watching. Like people are like, oh, if Gabe and Anna can do it, we can do it. And I'm just like, we had youths because we're in youth ministry. We've got people that are looking at us like they're sheep that are that we're shepherding. And for us, if we were to have sex, it's like we're trying to tell people that it's not possible, basically. Yeah. So sometimes there's a burden that comes with telling people, and that's a good thing because. It holds you accountable. Yeah, it really does hold you accountable. In order for us to wait until marriage, we just made sure that we limited the amount of time we spent in isolation. Yeah. That's this true. is why we wanted to go on um, more dates. We like we enjoy going to the cinema. Yes. We enjoy going for walks and talking. Yeah. Because we're in public places, not putting ourselves in the environment when something can happen. Yeah. And it's very dangerous when you're by yourself because literally anything could happen mm. from a passionate kiss that leads to a certain thing and then because no one is around you just keep going further and further and further yeah. and you don't want to isolate yourself because anything could happen yeah and for us the times where if we look back actually the times where we like fell for temptation is the times when we were in isolation mm. like where we felt like we could trust ourselves and we're like oh we'll be fine like we'll be okay we just need we just want to chill like we don't want to yeah. go out to eat we don't have money to spend um, and those are the times where you're just like whoa how did that happen sort of thing so really we just looked at our boundaries and we set them even more strict but we set some from the beginning anyway just from a practical standpoint so like we have never been on holiday together yeah we did go on a few um day trips yeah so we went to amsterdam paris and Scotland, I think. Yeah, we just keep yeah. it quite local. Quite local, just take the train, yeah. arrive in the morning, like overnight train, arrive in the morning and then come back in the evening. Yeah. Because there's no point trying to convince yourself that you're going to be in a hotel room yeah. alone. Next thing you know, the stars start aligning, yeah. you know, boys to men just comes on yeah. and then, woo, yeah. it's over. Yeah. Bed is just a bad idea. Our first flight together was our honeymoon and yeah, it was hard, but it's just about how bad yeah. you want to do this. Like, you just need to know yourself and know that, I don't know, a holiday in a hotel room, in a bed, is that really something yeah. that you should be doing? And it's really hard because yeah. you want to go on holiday, you yeah. want to experience life. But if you realise that, like, we're, well, I'm 26, and it's 25 now, we have, you know, God willing, we have the next 50 years or so yeah. to enjoy all those things. Yeah. So. It's just really important just to remember the why behind what you're doing yeah. and just not trying to rush through yeah. every season yeah. and just make sure that you understand your why yeah. and, and hold yourself accountable to it. Yeah, it is a generational thing that we as millennials really do think that everything needs to happen now, like it's an instant yes. generation, yes. like you post on social media, instant gratification, people like, people comment yes. and we think that with relationships it's just instantly great, like you don't have to do anything to build a great relationship, yes. but for us... And we, we have to do everything now. Yeah, like everything has to happen now because we want it now and it's not a good characteristic sometimes in some areas like we have really stood the test of time I know we haven't been together forever but we have gone through certain seasons and really do see the blessing of those seasons and yeah. um, the boundaries that we put in place then we've still got boundaries that we need to put in place now in marriage for example the not having best friends of the opposite sex that's a boundary that we put in place to protect our marriage if we couldn't set boundaries in our relationship and our dating how would we be able to set the boundaries in marriage so yeah. like there's overflowing blessings that have come through um, us waiting to have sex until marriage and we really would encourage you guys to, to try and do the same and the last barrier we put in place or the last assistance we put in place to help us along the journey to wait until we got married was to pray I'll let Anna take this because she's so passionate with Jesus <laughs> no guys prayer is everything like seriously and you know, you can't do it on your own. Like, it's not by our strength that mm. we can actually wait until marriage. It's not a normal thing. It's not natural. Like, yeah. and the Bible says that 
through his through our weaknesses, his power is made perfect. Like yes. we need to acknowledge that we are weak. We are weak. We can't wait until marriage. Even when I tell my colleagues sometimes, they're like, how? And I'm like, how? Because in my flesh, I That's can't good. do it. Because it's a natural thing that we actually want to do. Yeah. And we need the power of God to actually take us through it because yeah. it's not easy whatsoever yeah seriously so literally praying together as a couple and just saying god we know you humble yourself you have to humble yourself and be yeah. like god i know we can't do this by ourselves like we can't but with you lord you can do this so praying together is just so important and reminding yourselves of god's word and knowing that it's all about him and less about you and that it's only through his power and his strength that we're able to sustain ourselves until marriage like yeah people think like god's gonna be like oh my god you want to have sex but yeah. look, he understands and he, he created just... sex mate he <laughs> yeah. knows how good it is like he created it for a reason 100%. <laughs> so he, it's literally like he will give you his strength yeah. to be able to hold out until the very end yeah. so don't stop praying with your partner just come before God as honestly mm -hmm. as you can yeah. and pray that mm -hmm. you'll be able to stick it out and don't be um, thinking that you, you pray oh God I'm never going to do it you have, it's a daily thing like, yeah. you know with this whole way into your marriage it's a daily discipline like, yeah. all you really have to do is wake up today and say look I'm not going to have sex today yeah and then tomorrow you do the same yeah. and then before you know it we went through it two years and 11 yeah. months yeah. it was a daily discipline because every day brought a different challenge mm. every day Anna came with a next outfit <laughs> and I was like Woo! and I could be like Jesus <laughs> you know like it, it helped like you just need God to actually partner you with you in this because yeah it's not possible yeah because it says the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak and to harass me it's weak like you can wake up in the morning like god i feel like you know yeah. you know when you just have those yeah. good devotionals yeah, yeah. Like, you leave your house and you see your missus and you're like go go back and repent yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? it's real so you know we need jesus we need to call out to him we need to just humble ourselves and be like god i can't do this without you and the ability to pray together that's why it's important that you both made the decision because what who are you praying with when you're the one that's leading in saying we're waiting to manage the other person's not really on it like they're gonna even distract your prayer life so you need to have someone where you're on the same page you can repent together you can ask for god's help together you can trust in him together little by little step by step in the next minute two years and 11 months has mm. gone past and you're literally crying at the altar yeah. but you're about to do the Bruh. deed <laughs> Yeah. But guys, um, we hope this video helps. Um, uh, like talking about the boundaries that we put in place so that we could sustain ourselves until marriage is so worth it. And we really hope that through these videos, you're believing that you can do it too. And we'll see you in part three where we're talking about sex, sex in marriage. And we're not obviously going to go through the details, but no, we're going to go through the detail. <laughs> no, we just want to talk to you about because we've had sex before outside of marriage and now having sex in marriage there's a lot of questions like expectations is it as good da, 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 da. so we're going to just take you through like our our process and journey and yeah we'll see you next week guys later peace Bye.